So Rising Storm 2 has been out for about a month, and arguably I probably should have been making a video about this before now, but I didn't while I'm making one now. So Rising Storm 2. It's a sequel to uh, Red Orchestra 2's uh, expansion standalone Rising Storm, which came out in 2013. Uh, Rising Storm 2 is obviously a Vietnam warfare. You have US versus uh, VC battling across not too many maps. Uh, the sound and situation of this game are absolutely awesome. The immersion you get with this is fantastic. Here's a little example of that. Charlie is being attacked. The game does very well at throwing you into the Vietnam era. It sits like Red Orchestra in that kind of middle ground between something a little bit more full on like Armour or even Squad and then Battlefield. So it's kind of, it is quite arcadey, but it does have some small features which kind of bring that back a little bit, which we'll go into as we look through the video. But overall, uh, the game is really, really good as a general point of view. There are some small bits and pieces which I'm not too happy about. Uh, this was one example. I This is a thing I have in many games, right? When you have a kind of slope which is not so severe that you can get up it, but it's like a little bit more than a gentle slope. And many games have this where you can't really do like a scrabble. You know, you can't really scrabble up like a little incline or something like that. It's just stupid you would totally be able to do that I mean actually that's something where again armor excels it tends to be uh, pretty free when it comes to climbing over terrain so what's Rising Storm 2 got going on in terms of its actual gameplay well it's got three main modes so territories supremacy and skirmish territories is uh, a standard two round game mode uh, in order to win the attacking team you've got to capture the objectives on the map before the round ends defenders win if they can hold on to their uh, objectives long enough to break an assault and then basically enter lockdown uh, one or both teams can enter sudden death if they're reinforced tickets are depleted, the last team standing wins. A team can win the game by a tiebreaker if they have a higher overall score. In Supremacy, they capture objectives across a map. You earn points based on the number of objectives you hold. A team wins a game if they have a greater score. You get Sudden Death and also Tie Break in there as well. And Skirmish is basically similar to Supremacy. You've got four rounds, but it's eight versus eight player teams. Uh, players have got to seize all the objectives on the map and deplete enemies' spawn tickets within a timer. So those are your modes. Now, you only have four maps pretty much. I think that's right anyway. I think it's four maps. And that's one of the biggest issues that's the thing that you notice first and that you notice the most is the lack of map the maps which do exist are vast awesome they they look fantastic they feel great the level of detail is really excellent and it really does bring you into the era but there are just too few of them and it does make the gameplay become somewhat stale quite quickly actually um, it's surprising I think that's the issue as well when you have someone or anybody who's, who plays a lot of FPS games you do need that variety in there to kind of assist it's not like that's the thing which is going to always obviously um, make the gameplay become stale the, the stale gameplay often will come in as a variety of factors but maps and, and just the, the variety of situations which you play within does have an impact on that and uh, really that's one thing which this does need more of. Um, I have seen some community posts on Steam and stuff, people saying they're going to be making some elements and stuff, so again I think we could see some community maps um, which is really good, that will help a lot. Another great feature is, as you saw right here, the bandages system. So really, really great. Instead of throwing down med packs and just kind of vaguely healing up in an area-based system like you would in Battlefield, you actually have to physically bandage similarly to something like armor. Um, and that's really, really good. Really, really good to have that system in there because it means that you physically have to stop what you're doing and then heal up. Now, there's a couple of reasons why that's great. One, it means that you actually have to stop and you have to get yourself safe before you can bandage up. Two, I mean, the, the weapon damage is already extremely high in this game. Very, very high. You're talking like, you know, a couple of rounds will probably kill you if they're on point. Also, we've got like a nice little reticule here for, uh, you know, assisting and stuff like this, uh, calling in support, telling other people what you need and so on and so on, just if you need to help communication. So good to have that in there. Again, something which, you know, Battlefield uh, didn't have for quite some time and it took like begging to get people to bring that back in. But even then, nonetheless, it was kind of obviously irrelevant at that point because of how team play deteriorates. I've got to just throw that in there, of course, haven't I? Let's talk about spawning. Now, obviously you can see right here, I'm having to run 
back into the action and it takes some time this is the thing if you don't have the ability to spawn on your squad lead or if, if you're playing as vc and your tunnel is down then you are going to have to manually get back into the action and also the kind of the way in which the uh, wave respawn works in this game is really really good at preventing uh, you know one team from taking too much control and again you know when you compare it to other sort of arcade fps games that's something which really really helps to kind of temper the uh, pace of the game so that you don't feel like it's just this ongoing constant endless slaughter and struggle where it's just like you know never ending units coming in on you over and over and over and over and you never feel like you can really take control well in rising storm and also obviously in red orchestra that is a little different you know you, you feel like you can actually take control of an area because once you clear it of enemy they're not necessarily going to be able to just like grab some vehicle power straight back into that point and take it off you within like three minutes you know it'll take them a little while to regroup get back onto that point by the way, look at this vista right here. And look at the, the helicopters flying across in the background, burning forest. Just looks absolutely fucking epic. Um, also, you can see here, look, I'm only just firing like in, uh, you know, single fire mode and just putting rounds down, getting onto both those guys that were over there. And then bang, I just get sniped out of nowhere. It's like... <laughs> That's how this game feels. It's really full on in that respect. You know, you can die so quickly and if you have a sniper or some other guy that's on you from another position which you haven't had eyes on, you're just going to go down straight away. And that might seem like something to complain about, but actually it's really good because what that means is communication, spotting and being aware of where your enemy are and all these kind of things is critically important. You have to communicate with this game, you have to work together. Lone wolfing in this game is not really an option because often people will be embedded into, tr into for not into trees, but into like brush and forest and bushes and you know spotting your targets is you know it's a challenge you know sometimes when guys are hidden in shadows if they're hidden in heavy foliage they will blend right in especially on the city maps as well and it's that's, that's interesting on the city map because on the city map you've got all of that kind of urban destruction and decay all around you and you would think that with all the hard lines or the hard cover edges it would be pretty easy to spot people amidst that but often it can be quite challenging especially if people are sat back from a window and they're kind of more sitting in the shadow of a room it can be very challenging to spot just looking at the loadout system here and again so not quite the same as squad obviously i mean red orchestra had this for ages but you know you can see that within your class selection we have limited uh, specializations so rifleman you can just take if you're not doing anything else but then you've got those other specializations in there and that's something which is really really good because it just means you don't end up with the sniper spam you don't end up with like 20 engineers or whatever you know your basic roles are your grunt uh, point machine gun marksman uh, you got your specialist roles then you like the engineer the sapper grenadier uh, RPG guy and then your advanced like command squad lead and radio uh, also for pilots you've got transport and combat um, so all of these have I'm not going to go into like extreme detail on these they're all pretty self-explanatory you know um, but basically if you're the commander you can call in um, extra stuff onto a position you can call in basically fire support like the AC-47 uh, you can call in um, artillery barrages and things like this uh, and how that happens is from the squad lead basically throwing a signal grenade out and that gives you the option to deploy that stuff also so if you're VC, as you can see, uh, with the US you can spawn on your squad lead. The VC don't have that, but what they can do is do this. It's a slightly different mechanic. Again, you're able to put tunnels down, and these tunnels basically enable your guys to spawn at that point. So you can select a position where they spawn in. That's kind of interesting because then you do have that disparity between the two factions where the squad lead has to basically stay in a position that's safe like I'm playing right here, you know, I'm trying to play a squad lead, I'm trying to be a little bit cautious so that I don't get killed, because if I get killed, then again, my guys are going to have to spawn right back at the beginning, they can't get up here. Um, whereas if you're playing as the VC, you can be a little bit more aggressive, because you can put your tunnel down, and you don't have to worry about dying so much, so you can throw yourself into the mix a bit more. Um, when it comes to helicopters as well, the helicopters on the maps where they're on can be devastating or you know useless depending on who is flying them uh, but again the interesting thing with the helicopters is that you do have like uh, some positions on some maps where there's like machine guns that can fire against those helicopters but otherwise you're going to be just down to free fire rpgs there's no kind of locking systems or any bullshit like that so again that's something if you like that kind of raw gameplay which can be very good again look at the brutality here as well when you're just like rushing through the bat map barry running in front of me bang just like two hits and he's just down straight away in front of me just gets taken away and it, it can be quite terrifying it rem when you're in the kind of city combat, it reminds me quite a lot of Insurgency where you're worrying almost about every single round that's coming at you. You know, you really feel that. It's quite palpable. And like I said, but let me just demonstrate right here. You'll be walking along and then bang, a guy will just get taken out right in front of you. And it makes you throw yourself to the ground or immediately search for cover. You know, it's terrifying. You're not sure if it's a sniper. You're not sure what is happening right there. And again, look, I, I came up to the stairs, search. I was checking that corner. Bang, guy just comes out. I'm instantly down. You know, so it's really, really intense. You know, you look away 
away for half a second, you're dead. Um, and, and again, depending on how well you're doing or what's going on with your team, that can be incredibly frustrating or it can be incredibly exciting or satisfying if you are the guy who's wrecking. If you can find it, that's the, that's the thing. If you can you know finesse through if you can rake through and you actually learn these maps really well you can find those good positions and when you get into those good positions controlling choke points or routes across a map then you can really start to you know wreck through and rack up those kills and it's going to be on that enemy team to basically identify search find you and dig you out of there and we've had that a few times in this game already where there's like a sniper and he's like in a really strong position you just can't get on him usually you can counter these guys that's that's the thing that's great as well you, know, you can get someone move up and you can get a grenade up in there or you can counter snipe or you can do something else or you can get you know the command if you can get a signal grenade on that guy you can call in some artillery support or something like this there's usually counters and ways around these things but i mean just let's just talk on snipers for a moment because you could imagine with a high damage model that the snipers could be very very frustrating well the snipers are much more you, you can't really get that kind of quick scope gameplay going on or uh, not that I've seen anyway and it tends to be much more sort of hard scoping where your sniper is going to find himself a good position a more realistic I would say but not realistic obviously because this is quite an arcade game but more considered sort of positioning and angling and the other thing is when you're playing as a sniper um, the you see already like when I'm moving around here and there's like explosions happening it really shakes you know your gun your aim around so if you're playing as a sniper and you're trying to pick shots and there's explosions happening around you just the shake of the explosions is going to make that not impossible but very very difficult to really get onto a target it makes it a big big challenge indeed okay so now we've got to push up and cross this area and again it's another great thing with this game is just the that feeling when you have to move into the open you feel exposed it's not again like other games other fps games where you know sometimes you just run out and you think yeah 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 i'll just cross this area i'll be fine you do feel concerned you do want to check you want to make sure you usually might want to consider even having someone cover you so that if a guy pops up as you're crossing an open area that you're going to be able to put some you know fire down on these guys and again you can see this is exactly what's happening right here as we're moving up the guy pops around the corner and bang you know had those guys not been right up at the front so straight away i'm going to get my signal smoke onto that and then the command if he wants to is going to be able to get some kind of fire support on there Let's just talk again though about the kind of spotting and actually when you're seeing enemy and how you're coming in onto those guys. And again, not like Battlefield where you're not going to have names pop up, you're not going to have those markers. It's it's pretty raw, you know, and you have to really check who you are firing at. And of course, you know, like with squad and like with insurgency, team kill is on. Okay, so it, you can potentially wipe out your own team. But again, they've, there is a team kill um, penalty for all that. So if you're team killing your enemy, you're going to take a lot longer to spawn in. So that can be a really big deal. And again, identifying your target before you open fire is going to be really important. And that can actually lead to some pretty dangerous situations because sometimes you, you see a guy and you hesitate and you're like, is that definitely an enemy? You, you know, you have to take that extra half second to a second to make sure that it's an enemy unless you know again that's why communication is always so important to id and know where the rest of your guys are being able to bring up your minimap and constantly check you know where people are what's moving what's happening is really really critically important to this and again look you can see this as i say moving across an open area here i take a shot and straight away just feeling like fuck i'm exposed I don't want to immediately stand up. If that guy has already got like a bead on you, if he's already got you pinned, you definitely don't want to. But again, I was looking at my mini map. I'm just like, well, there's only friendlies off to my left hand side. So maybe I was taking friendly fire there. You can't possibly know. And that's the thing that kind of can be quite dangerous, quite scary, because now you're not sure. Is it an enemy? Is it friendly? Do I want to move? Do I not want to move? There's a lot of kind of that in this game there's a lot of kind of choices where you're not entirely sure or confirmed like what fire you're taking it makes it all the more exciting because it just means you have to kind of constantly think about how you want to move how you want to get onto a position how you want to coordinate with your teammates and communicate with them maybe get some guy who's in a better position than you to check on can he see can he id what's happening um that's the kind of thing and also when the units like i said before when the units are in this kind of jungle terrain in these bushes in these trees you really can lose people in there and again it makes these kind of areas just as dangerous as crossing an open area because you're just not sure uh, when it comes to camping though you would think well automatically people are just going to sit in these places and camp if it's so good not so much because again people might be sitting in there for a long time before they really see anyone you do find a lot of people are moving around fluidly now the last thing i want to say is that unfortunately like so many multiplayer games now online uh one of the biggest factors in how much enjoyment you're going to get with the game is the players and you know it's a real mixed bag the games that we played so far have been pretty 50 50 good games bad games games which played out down the middle um i would say because this game is a little bit more leaning towards not sort of uh, you know 
authentic is that the word we have to use now authentic instead of realistic but it, it's leaning towards you know not quite as arcadey as some games that's probably the best way to put it but the issue always is just how well and, and how coordinated other people in your team are you guys can be working well as a squad you can be first squad second squad but you know as you can see me typing here in the chat uh, this guy was flying us around forever and ever and ever and I'm just going Gut, dude land please land 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 the heli he was just flying round and round in circles allowing the gunners to hit nothing and it was just like what are you doing and eventually we figured out he couldn't land that was the thing we we do manage to in the end but the hilariousness of it is just that by the time we land the game's basically over and it was just like for Christ's sake and the most interesting thing of all is when you come to look at the scoreboard at the end of this round, you can actually see the other team managed to win this round with almost about the same kills as us, but very few kills. There was very few kills on this round that we played here. And it was just like, yeah, look, here we go. We were sure that we were going to crash at this point. I don't know what this guy was doing. And again, look, you know, I'm, I'm not focusing on calling this guy out. I'm not saying like, oh, look, look at this terrible guy. It's just an illustration of the kind of things which you can encounter in you know any kind of public situation. You're just going to have people who just think to themselves like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to take a helicopter." There's a tutorial, like there's there's a there's a there's a free mode you can go in and practice. You can learn to fly, and just like armor, if you're gonna fl if you're gonna take a role of something specialized like a helicopter, go and learn to fly before you get in there. Don't just think, "Well, I've kind of learned it a little bit. Now I'm going to put my skills to the test and and just you know, or, or maybe just think, "Oh, I want to be a pilot today." Go and learn that stuff so you can be reliable for your team. It's super important. Um, and it's just something you're always going to encounter. This is something which is just an ongoing issue with multiplayer games in general today. And I've talked about this with upcoming games like Hell Let Loose, but indeed any upcoming FPS game. And it's, it's not about like everyone being a super twitchy, super strong, you know, 20 zero KD player. That's not what it's about. It's about people having basic understandings of awareness, where they need to be moving, what the objectives are, and how they can best assist their teammates. That's it. Real basic stuff. You know, we're not expecting everyone to be full-on LNLG players, but it's just about can those people bring to the table the basic core principles of any game. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. If you want to see some more, tell me down in the comments. I'm enjoying this game. I would like to see more maps. But for now, that's it. Thanks, guys. See you next time.